So hello everybody. This is Luboš Pirkl from CFD Support. I am here in our Prague office with my colleague Radek Matsa. Hello Radek. Uh, hello Luboš. Good afternoon everybody. So how are you today? Yeah, I'm fine, thanks. And how are you? Oh, I'm also fine. Uh, thanks. Um, are you ready for the webinar? Yes, I am. Okay, me too. So let's go. Yes. Together with us on the line, uh, there is Oliver Felde uh, from CF Turbo in Dresden. Uh, hello, Oliver. Hello, Lubos, and good afternoon to everybody. <laughs> okay, hello. Uh, the same okay. question to you, Oliver. Uh, how are you today? I'm fine, and uh, and I already heard that you are also fine. It's good. <laughs> okay, yeah, yeah. So we are. So uh, yeah, yeah. So I think we can we can start. Yes. So, hello again, everybody. Welcome to the webinar on turbo machinery design and analysis. In today's webinar, we would like to show you an easy way how to design an axial fan from scratch in CF Turbo and then how to simulate and evaluate it in Turbo Machinery CFD. Uh, the webinar is being recorded and its recording will be available on our YouTube channel. And I hope everything works well, all the te techniques is fine. And yeah, in case of any technical problems, feel free to contact us in the future and we will gladly answer all your questions and comments. Uh, uh, yeah, I'll just last question on to Radek. Uh, Radek, is everything okay? Is is it working? Yes, everything is clear. Okay. The sound is clear. You can continue. <laughs> okay, okay, thank you. Okay. So let me let me start with uh, who we are. So I'm gonna introduce us a little bit. So this is me. My name is Lubos Pirkel. I'm co-founder of Safety Support. I'm here in our Prague office with my colleague Radek Matza. Radek is our head engineer and senior developer here at CFD Support. And finally, in Dresden, there is Oliver Felde. Oliver is senior manager CAE at CF Turbo. He is responsible for consultancy and software development, especially for the implementation of turbo machinery design theory and related algorithms. So this is us. And I will. I would like to to say a little bit about the program of today's webinar. So there will be four parts in the webinar. Uh, in the first part, which is basically this this part, will be a general introduction. In the second part, let's call it the design part or CF Turbo part. There will be a live example where Oliver is going to introduce uh, CF Turbo and a little bit. And then he will show a live example of Axial Fan design in CF Turbo and final export of the designed model to Turbo Machinery CFD. In the next part of this webinar, let's call it the simulation part or Turbo Machinery CFD part, there will be the other live example where Radek is going to show you Turbo Machinery CFD simulation and evaluation of that Axel fan exported by Oliver from CF Turbo in, in the previous section or pre previous part. And in the last part, uh, there will be a Q&A session ded dedicated to your questions and our answers. Feel free to put your questions to the special window below or you can even send us an email to info at cfdsupport.com. We will answer all your questions uh, later in this webinar. Feel free to put your questions. It's, this is a really important part. It's, it's your time. We are here for you. So just use your, use your chance. Um, OK, so which brings me to, to, the, to, the, to the design part of this webinar. So I'm going to hand over the presentation to Oliver. Uh, so, Oliver, will you tell us about CF Turbo? Yes, I will. Um, thank you, Lubosz, for the introductory words. Um, CF Turbo is a company based in, in, in Germany, and um, we develop as our main product the conceptual design software CF Turbo, which is a modern, powerful, and user friendly software tool. Uh, it can be used for 
the design of all turbo machinery design components that you can, th well, almost all you can think of. It is called conceptual design because you don't start with the definition of uh, data points or uh, by typing in the, the coordinates, but instead you start with an operational point and then in the software a lot of um, um, algorithms and empirical stuff is used to, to guide you through a design process, which in the end will give you um, a good 3D representation of your turbo machinery component. Um, right now we have 200 active clients globally and it's, it's uh, still growing. Um, um, in CF Turbo, you have the choice between uh, a couple of different modules. Uh, those modules are those for the design of fan, compressor, pumps, turbine, uh, uh, impellers, both for axial as well as centrifugal machines. But you could be a little bit, you said, we'll, we'll be there. Thank mm. oh, Sorry. <laughs> and it, there are also modules available for the uh, um, design of veined stators plus, of course, the volutes. Okay, and that's probably quite quickly uh, as an introduction to CF Turbo. It's probably interesting for you which uh, industries we serve. So it's uh, basically the aerospace uh, industry, automotive. Uh, branches, consumer products, energy, oil and gas, and so on. Thank you. Uh, okay, Oliver, so I'm going gonna, I'm, I'm gonna to hand over the presentation to you because I think you, you're going to make the demo right now. All right. Okay, uh, can you see my desktop? Yes, yes, yes okay. we can. Okay, yeah. thank you. Yeah. Okay, that's that's the the desktop appearance of CF Turbo when you started. Uh, in the middle, you see a list of um, available models that are shipped with our software. So this, for instance, would be the centrifugal branch, and here it would be the actual fan branch. But I don't want to go the way uh, over the uh, already designed uh, models but uh, want to design something completely new. And to this end, I'm entering the ventilator space by clicking on that uh, soft button. And the first thing uh, which is to do is the definition of the design point because the uh, um, this conceptual design we perform within CF Turbo is a best point. Um, design and the operating point consists of flow rate, um, pressure difference and speed. So for that um, fan, the flow rate is 9,500 uh, cubic meter per hour. Uh, by the way, you can at any time customize the unit settings in accordance to your preference preferences. Uh, I choose the SI units uh, for this example. So uh, the pressure difference is something like uh, 3000 uh, Pascal and the speed is 4500 RPMs and of course it's necessary to define a fluid and uh, here air at a temperature of 20 centigrade is used. The total pressure definition is just used for the calculation of some internal um, average values, but it's not really necessary for, for the design. Okay, once that is fulfilled, I can press OK and the first uh, thing is I'm asked by the program what kind of component should be defined and added to the project uh, following the defini definition of the operating point. 
And since I want to design an actual machine, it should be an actual impeller. Uh, again, if I choose that options, I'm guided through the design process and the first uh, design step I'm going to enter is the definition of the main dimensions. The main dimensions are just, if you look at the right, the inlet diameter and outlet diameter of the, of the impeller. But back to the first tab in the main dimension design step. Here, one has to tell whether uh, the um, impeller should be unshrouded or shrouded. If it's unshrouded, like in our case, a, a certain tip clearance should be defined. Uh, you always get a proposal by CF Turbo which can be accepted or which can be overwritten and in this case I, I choose something like 0.5 millimeter. If there was a multi-stage machine you can also tell about the power partitioning between for instance two impellers so I could have just 50% on the first and the other 50 on the second one. But of course that should be a single stage machine and that's why I can stick to that 100%. Also there are two different design modes implemented. One is the airfoil mode where um, aerodynamic properties of, of um, airfoils are used uh, to, to make the design. The other one is a more traditional mean line approach where uh, just Euler equation and thing, things like that are used to, to make the design. So that's kind of a decision you have to uh, make at that point, but as the whole project is fully parameterized, you can also go back at any time and can choose a different design mode. I have airfoil. Uh, I want to use airfoil mode, that's why I click that radio button. Um, the next uh, tab holds some parameters that are used to, to make a good uh, choose of the dimensions. So for instance the work coefficient can be a design parameter and this for instance is, a, a, this uh, proposal by CF Turbo is taken from the Cordier, well-known Cordier diagram. So we have a specific speed of something like 100 for that operating point and for that operating point Cordier suggests a work coefficient uh, of 0.6 or something like that. These data which you see here are uh, contained in what we call the approximation functions. Uh, those are shipped with CF Turbo and they are given together with the source where they are taken from but uh, you can also customize this by just adding your own stuff here, your own functions, which can be, for instance, uh, um, built in by just copy and paste numbers from, for instance, Excel sheet. And then you can save these things and you can hold that uh, on your desktop computer and you can hold it in-house, even if it's uh, very special knowledge. Okay, so that's the, uh, the work coefficient. Um, also, there is a diameter ratio to be defined. Again, there is a, a certain uh, a proposal. I'm going to change that to 70%. And there are other parameters uh, given or to be defined. And all of these parameters will be used to, to get proposals for the uh, main dimensions uh, as well, yes, a, a proposal for the main dimensions. So after I'm happy with the definition of the parameters, I can go to the last tab, can press the calculate button and then based on balance equations and some empirical stuff and based on those parameters, CF Turbo calculates some proposals and they look like that. And uh, I want to make them, uh, I want to get rid of these uh, decimal points and that's why I'm, I'm going to, to change that very last number of the diameters here. Once I'm happy with that, I can just look at the right hand side in the, in the information panel and can see what are the average 
values I can expect from that design. So for instance, I can calculate average velocity triangles. I can see with my uh, impeller diameter where I am in the Cordier diagram and what is the meridian contour looking like. Also, there's this automatic checkbox. If I check that and uncheck the automatic fit on the right hand side, a new calculation of the main dimension is done at any time I, I change some of these parameters here. Okay, but at the end, I, I, when I'm happy with that, I, I want to, uh, well, I had 70. I want to keep values that, that's why I take the checkbox off and define something uh, rounded values. And when I press OK, then I get a first um, No, there's no no data. A first uh, guess of my meridional contour. The next uh, design step is the definition of the meridional contour itself within the limitations of the diameter that was that were just uh, defined. So here I cannot change the uh, the diameters itself because they have been designed in in a, in a previous design step, but I can change the actual extension. I can directly set it to certain numbers and I also can change angles of inlet and outlet and once I'm happy with that I can press OK and now I should be able to see something in 3D and this is given here. Third design step is the definition of the um, the stagger angle and the uh, cord lengths of the of the blades at different spans. Also I have to type in how many numbers I want to have and because I am here in the uh, airfoil mode I, I need to tell him also what kind of uh, profile I'm going to use. And for the reason that that our operating points uh, yields or leads us to a so-called high pressure fan, the leap line theory should be chosen to define the uh, uh, the blades. And if the leap line theory is chosen, then only the NACA 65 series is available for the uh, blade design. But within the NACA 55 series, there are, of course, uh, a couple of uh, different uh, profiles. So there is a profile manager implemented in CF Turbo where you have a certain predefined profiles, but those can be um, extended by any self-defined uh, profiles or profiles taken from literature, for instance. Okay, um, also what is interesting is at the first tab there is the so-called CU-CM specification. Here uh, radial equilibrium is used and that takes, uh, is just basically a force balance, an equation for the force balance and it takes into account again the uh, global setup, the operation point there. Also, the number of, of blades can be defined here and the number of spans at which uh, I want to design the blade. I stick to 15 spans because that gives me most of the freedom and I also will um, stick to the free vortex um, distribution of the absolute velocity components right after the trailing edge of, of the blade. Okay, and because I have chosen already the, the, the profile I'm going to use, I can again use CF Turbo to calculate what is the stagger angle and what is the cord length at all of this 15 spans. Or if I take off that automatic checkbox, I can just individually define the stagger angle and so on for any of, of the spans. 
Okay, that is uh, especially handy if you if you go into an optimization process and if you find, for instance, that your first initial design did not get uh, what you wanted to have. So here, then you can uh, scale the profile accordingly and and uh, can try to get closer to what you want to reach with with your fan. Okay, once that is finished, I can press OK and. The very uh, the next design step is then all the 15 profiles at every of that 15 spans is scaled in accordance to the chord length that was defined in the blade properties and is also staggered with the stagger angle gamma at uh, which was set there here i can use the uh, built-in um, 3d preview Uh, where are we? Okay, here we are, and and you 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 will get an impression what what has been done so far. The same can be reached just by go to the three D model, and you see here uh, what we have reached so far. Of course, when it comes to the design of uh, actual fans, acoustic uh, performance or well, uh, the the acoustic behavior when in in when running the the fan is very important. And there is a design uh, step implemented which can be used to improve the the acoustic performance, and that's called the sweep blade sweep and to this end in two different modes one can try to sweep the uh, the, the the blades in order to get an acoustic benefit I said two different modes one mode is sweeping in in the meridional uh, view and in tangential direction and the other one is in in the sweep angle lambda direction and in the direction that is perpendicular to that uh, sweep uh, definition. Okay, and if I sweep in in uh, in lambda, I get a an ID of the acoustic benefit benefit I can reach with that uh, sweeping, and I can have this diagram which which shows me. Uh, what is the benefit, especially close to to hop and uh, close to shroud um, in decibel? And you see here, if 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 uh, if I zoom in, how the sweeping is is performed, and what it will mean to to the actual 3D uh, shape of the of the blade. But of course, that that. Uh, doesn't improve the aerodynamic uh, performance of the blade and that's why there is a, a sweep correction uh, factor that is uh, automatically computed in a, uh, independence on, on the on the sweep and this is uh, something like 9, uh, 0.97 and if I press OK and I will get this warning here that this 9.7 value is not set in the blade uh, property uh, definition and that's why I'm going back there re do a recalculation I get a bit longer uh, uh, chord lengths and now this is this is fine and I don't get any warnings anymore and in 3d it looks just like that Okay, so that's the first thing, and the second one is quite quickly uh, adding a, a vein stator right behind the actual uh, impeller in order to get the swirl out of the flow behind the impeller. And here I'm just telling him how long um, the actual extent should be of that. Uh, bladed fan where is the uh, location of the leading and trailing edge 
So here, for instance, oh, that was a bit, let me go back to, I think it's, it's a bit too long. Uh, I think it was, it should not be 60, but 45, for instance. Okay, and if I now go back and, and, and tell him what is the right position of it, I'm quickly through the design process. Again, I have to enter the blade properties where I tell him how many blades uh, I want to use, what is the general shape of, of the uh, veins of the stator, and uh, what is the thickness here, because I'm not using uh, airfoil data here as for the impeller design, but what we call a mean line design. Um, again, I can use uh, the built-in calculation uh, algorithms of CF Turbo automatically or just by by my own request, and then the lead edit the leading edge angle will be uh, calculated in a, to get an um, an incidence-free uh, flow towards the leading edge, and the trailing edge has to be set in order to get zero spill right behind the um, stator. Once that is finished, I'm, I, I'm going to do the mean surface de design. And here I go for a certain um, wrap angle that, that might change from hub to shroud. So I have at, at the hub, for instance, seven degrees, at shroud five degrees. And again, again, I can get some preview here of the of the vein or of the blades that have a zero thickness right now. And in order to get a, th a decent thickness, I'm, I'm going to enter the next design step where I define the uh, thickness distribution from leading to trailing edge. I want to leave everything by uh, to default, and then the very last design step is to define how is the leading edge shaped. So here, for instance, it had an, ellipt as an elliptic shape, and the training edge is somehow trimmed with the outlet. And if I press OK and go to the 3D model, I'm ready with my first initial design, which I'm going to, to save. Of course, test is the right name, and by saving this, I'm coming to the end of that little presentation, and uh, I want to give the presenter to Radek now. Okay, uh, thank you, Oliver. It was a remarkable presentation and a very nice live demo of CF Turbo. So now it's time for Turbo Machinery CFD part of, of this webinar. So I'll take the presentation back. Uh, by the way, Radek, can, can you see my screen now? Yes, 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 I can. Okay, thank you. Okay, thanks for this confirmation. Okay, so now it's... Uh, the CFD part, so please let me give a brief description of what Turbo Machinery CFD is. So Turbo Machinery CFD is a unique software developed by Czech company CFD Support. It's a smart and easy to use and affordable CFD simulation tool. Turbo Machinery CFD was designed uh, for CFD simulations of all rotating machinery, such as pumps, fans, uh, compressors, turbines, turbochargers, hydro turbines, etc., uh, both radial and axial machines, both compressible and incompressible fluid flows. It is based on open foam, and we believe the machine the CFD is unique, at least for four reasons. So the first uh, uniqueness would be uh, CFD has no licensing policy, which means our clients can keep Turbomachinery CFD forever and they can use it for unlimited number of users, jobs, or cores. 
uh, what is paid for is the first delivery of the machinery CFD and uh, later the technical support and software maintenance. Uh, this gives the, the investment in turbo machine CFD a permanent value, of course. And also this means our clients can scale their CFD simulations in a really big way. Uh, number two would be turbo machine CFD is fully automated, which means all the workflow from the initial data to the final results report, for example, it can be run by a single click or by a single command. Uh, and all the, all the process is being done automatically. And for this reason, Turbo Machine CFD is extremely effective. Uh, number three would be, we believe we deliver the extraordinary technical support. We are proud of it. We keep custom approach to every customer, to every issue. We never leave behind any of our clients. We are very flexible in delivering of technical support. Technical support is unlimited and we support our clients even in matters out of turbo machinery field, for example in numerical mathematics, physics, uh, CFD, IT or even software engineering. Uh, the last one uh, is the real tutorials are included in turbo machinery CFD, so the turbo machinery CFD user has no doubts about the best practice settings. Uh, the, the real machines are included that are already preset and the user can basically take one of those tutorials, he can replace the geometry with his, with his own, uh, he can modify the settings and run the simulation, the rest of the workflow is automated anyway, so the requirements of the user skills on the user skills are, are quite or, or very low. Uh, there are many other benefits of using Turbo Machine CFD. I'm not not, go not gonna go for all of them. I only finish here with my last point that here at CFD Support we believe that the future of CFD is the automation. Uh, in CFD, everything can be automated. The automation is extremely effective. It's even more effective than we expected in the first place. And nowadays at CFD Support, we only think in automated sense, so which brings a huge value to our customers, so everything can be automated. That's our point of view. Uh, and now I think this is this is it from my short introduction to Turbo Machine CFD and now it's time for our live example, which is Radek Stern. So Radek, are you ready? Yes, I am. So please, can you give me oh, a Of course. Yeah, yeah. So you can go. Okay, so I hope you see my screen. Uh, yes, we yeah. do. Yes. So, okay, so thank you, Lubos, for introduction. And good afternoon again to everybody. This is Radek speaking again. So first, let, let me briefly introduce the outline of this part of today's webinar. So I am going to show you how easy it is to work with the Turbo Machinery CFD. So we are going to use the export from CF Turbo, which makes workflow even simpler. So uh, as you will see with CF Turbo and TCFD, we are able uh, we are able to run a CFD simulation and get significant results just by few clicks. Okay, so we can start. So I will we simply start from the data which which uh, uh, which Oliver has just generated and exported. So I can use any file file browser, for example, the implicit file file browser or file explorer in Windows. But I prefer a commander-like uh, file explorer. So I will go to the Excel file, which is directly generated from CF Turbo. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, yes, so th this is the export from CF Turbo. So in the STL directory, there is separate STL files which uh, which holds the information about each part of the of the machine. For example, impeller blades, impeller hub, and so on. And this is ba basically all what we need to start creating the CFD case and CFD simulation. But uh, in addition, from CF2 Bravo, we get this Excel fun uh, TCFD configuration file, which 
holds the basic setup for the CFD simulation with our software. So basically it holds the initial condition, boundary condition, and it holds the information about the input geometry. Okay, so uh, so for the first computation, there is no need to make any modification. So anything can be run automatically. So to start using TCFD, you need just to click on the configuration file and the new Paraview session with TCFD setup appears directly. So we have developed the graphical user interface as a part of the Paraview, which is a standard third-party software directly delivered with OpenFOAM. So here, we are, here you are able to set the CFD computation, run the simulation and post-process the results. So it means that 100% of workflow can be managed directly here via this graphical user interface. So now we can see a standard layout in Paraview where the configuration file is already loaded. So to start using it, we need to just click on apply to enable this configuration file. And now we can see that the layout is split in two windows. In the first one, we can see the input geometry. So this is the, the left one, the white one is the rotor part and the red one is the stator part. And the right window, uh, and the right window shows the shows the setup of the parameters which is needed for TCFD simulation. So for for now there, there is oh yeah, parameters which are set so we can read it but I think for now it is not important so I will leave just the input geometry. Um, so as you can see in the left panel there is there is a properties panel which has several menus so I will just undock it and move it a little bit left okay so for example here and these menus basically contains all parameters which can be changed for for the simulation so as I already said there is no need to change anything because everything is preset from CF Turbo but I will just go briefly through these menus and tell tell you what what is uh, what what we can change in these menus. So in the first one, the general, here you can save your setup in the TCFD file, or you can load anyone, you can, or reload if you set something in the wrong way and you would like to reload the old setup and so on. And important parameter, which is the machine type, and it basically choose the type of the machine you would like to simulate because compressor needs uh, needs another or different parameters than fan and and so on so you have to set your machine type in the coordinates you simply set the axis of the rotation using the point uh, which is the origin and and the axis of the rotation the geometry just scales the input. For example, CF Turbo use uh, the default unit millimeters and open for meters. So you you have to tell uh, tell the parameter to scale from input geometry to uh, to the meters units. And for example, feature edges includes angle parameters is advanced parameter which can extract the edges from STL and can help the meshing process, which is done by Snappy Hex Mesh. And anytime you point uh, you point the box with the parameter, you can see the help. So it is really useful, and you can read the information about each parameter. In the physics part, you define the fluid property. So here we have air with with the uh, because we are we are working in incompressible mode. So you should set up the reference density, pressure, and temperature, and dynamic viscosity here. You can you can choose the turbulent model. So for this case, we have k omega SST. So the menu speed lines uh, uh, includes the simulation points. So here you can change the number of of speed lines, for example. So you can in one uh, in one simulation you can simulate different speed of rotations using the speed lines bar, 
and for each speed line you can uh, define several points which holds the information about the boundary condition. So for each point you have to set the maximum number of iteration for each steady state iteration or for each steady state simulation. So here we have 500 iterations for each point and as I can see as I, uh, as I already said that each point holds the information about the it, about the boundary conditions, about the different uh, simulation and this is set up in the inlet and outlet boundary condition. So for, he, so for this simulation we simulate several points with different volumetric flow rate. For an, another type of simulation we can set for example different total pressures, different uh, uh, directed mass flow rate with the different di uh, inlet direction and so on. And on, for this type of simulation when we, where we prescribe volumetric flow rate at the inlet, so we, we prescribe the fixed boundary, fixed pressure at the outlet boundary condition. And because we are working in incompressible, mo incompressible mode, this is the static, uh, this is the kinematic pressure, so the reference pressure is zero at the outlet, which is a standard uh, approach to these type of simulations. Inside the simulation menu uh, you can ch choose the steady state simulation or steady state and transient simulation. If you choose the transient so you need to define the time period for the computation of each point. So you can define it as the time in which is scaled to the revolutions per point. So it means now the, the simulation will take four real revolution of the wheel of the rotor or you can set it just in seconds. So I will leave for example these revolutions per point and important parameter which is the processor's number so you can set any number of processor with respect to your machine to your hardware so there is no limitation to number and the scalability is really really high. We perform a lot of simulation and studies which which <coughs> proves that that uh, the scalability with the increased number with increasing number of processor it's very really high and for example you can set the second uh, the numerical order uh, uh, second or first. Okay so this was the simulation menu in the numerics menu there is there this menu has relaxation parameters and initial condition so it holds the value of uh, sorry sorry um, relaxation parameters for the solver and and uh, initial condition holds the initial value or initial guess for for each variable and then we we are coming to the components components menu which is important for definition of of the of the geometry so if I redistribute the windows okay so here the component basically defines the input geometry and the computational mesh and the strategy for computational mesh construction is really simple and basically it follows the geometry construction in CF Turbo so each part of the machine in this case uh, rotor and stator or other parts for for, dif uh, for a different machine are defined as one separate component and each component can be defined both using STLs and then the mesh is created using uh, the SnapX mesh or you can use any external open foam mesh it means an external mesh which is converted to open foam uh, format so you can also use the external meshes and then you can define the component name. Uh, the software also provides the periodic segment. So if you would like to simulate just one blade from, I, I guess, 17 blades for this case, so you will define here 17 periodic segments. And afterwards, for each STL, which is which is connected to these components, with so this impeller you define the physical type of the boundary so for blade is blade for the inflow which is really physical inlet to the geometry is inlet or outlet 
and the interfaces between between uh, each component there is interface uh, outlet outlet interface or inlet interface uh, and for each geometry in case of, of STLs we should define the level of refinement so refinement for for each part of the geometry we can add the layers to any part of the geometry usually to the wall and the communication approach between rotating and, and, and non-rotating part usually. So this simulation uses mixing plane approach or if you set zero mixing planes for the interface then it means it, it uses arbitrary mesh interface. So this is done for both components and here you can see a fine figure of your topology so it is really useful when you start creating your mesh from from the scratch so for example if I connect connect it wrong for example so you can see the mismatch and the dashed dashed line shows you that something is wrong so if I first component should be connected to second so you can see that everything is okay the solid arrow uh, shows you that you connect uh, these components correctly and you can check it here so it is useful when you create the mesh from really really beginning so other parameters for example background mesh size defines the, the largest cell in in the geometry and internal point points inside the component yeah because we would like to mesh the geometry from inside okay and other parameters other menus are related to to the snappy hex mesh so it includes parameters which can be set for snappy hex mesh but but there is the best practice setup for each type of machine so there is uh, there is no need to change change it or change them so the last is the post processing here you can for example define from which patches uh, you would like to evaluate the efficiencies, pressure drops, and or and or the torque. So basically, you can edit here. The largest average, uh, averaging window define the how many iteration iterations should be used for the averaging of the of the yeah of the results, and also for the transient transient. Uh, transient uh, type of simulation you should also define the transient window in seconds so or here for this case revolution so the result will be averaged for each one it, uh, revolution of, of the wheel or you can set it in seconds of course and snapshot interval if you would like for example generate a lot of images to create for example the video as you can see at the beginning of this webinar so you can set the snapshot interval here and the last but not least you can define user defined function which can hold some advanced post processing or different turbulence model and so on okay so whenever you are satisfied with the setup you should click on apply to apply the changes in in the setup so I will dock it back here on the usual position okay which yes perfect okay so this was the setup yeah and now we can we can go for the running of the simulation and to do that we use this uh, TCFD manager so I will click on it and click on apply and now uh, we will see uh, we can see the new buttons in the left panel so using this button we can simply run the simulation so first I can define the directory name in which the results will be stored for example my case then I click on apply then I should write the case so it creates the important files and directories to 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 run the case it creates all necessary files and so on and after that we can run the whole simulation by one click 
using this button or simply we can iterate this process so first by creating the mesh so I can click on the mesh all so now you can see that now it's meshing the component one so if I jump a little bit in time which I hope is somewhere here oh yes yes so now the, the mesh is the mesh is done I can visualize it for example the stator uh, the rotor wheel so by clicking on the show button and then apply so here is the mesh so I can visualize visualize it see the topology okay so this is the this is the mesh after the meshing and when I, I am satisfied I can simply run the calculation so during the simulation you are always informed about the process as you see at the beginning the meshing process is shown and afterwards you can see a progress of the simulation so now we, you see that the simulation is starting we have a lot of points so so yeah, yeah now we can see the first point is simulated is computed and here you can see the the remaining time for the point and for the speed line because we have defined only one speed line so it corresponds to the total total time left anytime we can skip to the next point about the calculation or about the calculation and write the current result anytime during the computation we can update report which gives you instant information about the computation so usually you can follow you can follow the residuals or you can see already computed points so uh, immediately yeah so when the report is updated you can see it here in this window and for example here are residuals within first 18 iterations okay so when we jump in time again so now we can see that the run calculation is done so now we can see the full report with all defined points so now I will go quickly through the report which holds the simulation statistics so it is the case the name of the case number of points simulated which machine type rotation speed mesh size details about mesh non orthogonality and so on y plus important parameter for turbulence modeling for each uh, <coughs> for each uh, for each part of the geometry uh, wall clock time so how long does it take to to get the solution how many processor was used and so on and then then there are several characteristics so for example fan char characteristic which is <coughs> which is the important parameter for fans so for each point which is defined by the by the boundary condition volumetric flow rate the next one is the efficiency important parameter so now you can see where is the best efficiency point you can clearly read the values from this table and the convergence process uh, through the through the computation then another parameter is torque which is automatically evaluated for again for each point you can see the convergence again total pressure difference between inlet and outlet Pascals for each point so you can clearly see a lot of information total pressure per interfaces velocity magnitude per interfaces circumferential and meridional angle again for for each interface and that is yeah this is all for this so this was the report because we run also the transient report so you can see here so here is the transient report so <clears throat> again you can compare the result between steady state and transient the efficiency and so on so here you can see the progress <clears throat> the the values during the simulation and so on yeah so this is nice report with a lot of information inside but furthermore you can you can do your own visual visualization so I prepared some of them in advance so you can clearly visualize the whole geometry with 
for example, total pressure distribution or just a part of the geometry, so hub, hub and blades of stator and rotor. You can do any slice as you want. You can align the vector field, for example, to the slice and visualize uh, the, the glyphs of the uh, relative velocity. It automatically computes URL, which is the relative velocity in the rotor part and stator part. And for example, we can also visualize the <coughs> 3D streamlines along the blades. So this is the standard tool in Paraview, and we have developed also the, the turbo turbo filters, turbo tools. So for example, for example, this is the example of the meridional average. So it can be applied on every axial symmetric geometries. So it computes the uh, meridional average and it can be visualized on, on the reference plane or on the reference meridional slice. The next one is Turbo Unwrap for blade-to-blade -blade view. So for example, this is the blade-to-blade -blade view for rotor and stator with, with pressure contours distribution. Or here is the slice at, let's say this is in the middle, so in 50% of radial coordinates between hub and shroud. And on this slice, we can visualize, for example, streamlines with, with velocity distribution. So basically, there are a lot of possibilities how to, how to visualize what you want. So I think my time is already up. OK, so, so at the end, as you have seen, the TCFD uh, it's a great, easy to use and powerful tool for detailed evaluation and validation of your geometries. So basically in CF Turbo, you can design your machine and then by a few clicks, even without any deep knowledge of CFD, you are able to validate your geometry. So using CFD for Turbo Machinery Evaluation has never been easier. So I will, I am almost at, at the end. Okay, so maybe I can. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, everybody is back. Okay. Can you hear me? Yes, yes, we can. Okay. Yeah. So thank you, Radek, for your live demonstration and for the demo. We have had some technical problems, but I think it's gonna be okay right now. Um, yeah. So I'll take the the presentation. Oh, yeah, sure. uh, Back to me. Okay. So I believe you can see. Uh, or can you can you see my screen? Yes, yes, I see. Yeah, now I see the video. Okay, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, uh, I need to start my presentation again. Yeah. Okay. So. Uh, yeah. So this is this was the live example of of the machine the CFD, and uh, now it's time for your questions and our answers. So this is the time, so please put, put your questions and we will go one by one and answer them. Uh, okay, so we already have a few questions. So, yeah, yeah. So uh, this one is okay. Uh, I have one for Oliver. So how is the sweep correction factor in CF Turbo calculated? Uh, Oliver, you think you can you can answer this question? Yes, or? yes I can. I can. Okay. Um, the the sweep correction factor is a function of the uh, absolute velocity uh, distribution right of the, the trailing edge of the impeller. It is also a function of the chord length distribution and also a function of the sweep angle distribution. And it is based on an empirical formula with a certain set of coefficients. So, so, um, yeah, that's that's the answer. It, it's okay. it's an empirical uh, correlation. It doesn't take into account uh, well the three D sweeping, but the sweeping into lambda direction. Uh, okay, thank you, Oliver, for this for this answer. And yeah, yeah, and uh, I have I see a few few questions on Radek uh, regarding the machine CFD. Mm -hmm. So Radek, can you go for for them? Can you can you already see them? Because I have I have 
uh, oh, assigned you as, as the answer. Okay, 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 I see. So I can start from the beginning. Okay, there is a question. How are the values chosen for the boundary condition in LED? Okay, well, so I can find it. Yeah. So I will go from here to the settings menu in LED. Well, okay, so from the CF Turbo export, you get uh, the design point which holds the, yeah, thank you, thank you, yeah. Bosch. So now you can see my screen. Yeah, I hope. Yes, yes, you can. So so you, you get the best design points from, from the CF2 Pro. So it depends on the, design, on the design step. So on which volumetric flow rate, let's say, is the actual fan designs. So basically to validate the best design point or, or to find the, or to find find the the shape or the or the real real properties with different uh, volumetric flow rates. So you should define as many points as you want to find or to validate the the best efficiency point or or really the line the profile of the efficiency with respect to the volumetric flow rate. So it was designed with respect to the design point and we define a lot of points along or among these points to see nice figures and to see really the, the characteristic and the properties of the of this fan for the let's say wide range of, of volumetric flow rates. Yeah so so basically it's up the user which knows which knows the the properties of the of the fans. Yeah, so we, we set it in this way. So it is up to user. So I hope I answer it. Okay, okay, very well. And yeah. there, there is also a question, another one. How mm -hmm. how are the values chosen from the boundary condition uh, the in line? Yeah, this, this, it was answered right, right now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, and all the, mm -hmm. yeah. What yes. is the STL mesh? So how it is different from external open foam meshing? Okay, so if you would like, if the, the, there is two options how to define the computational mesh. So first one is to use uh, in-house or the Snappy hex mesh tool, which needs the STL files, which is just the surface, surface triangularization. I can show it here. La la la, components, surface with edges, which is the output from, from CF Turbo. And it is just the surface, surface geometry. So if I apply the clip, so I will hope you will see, yeah, it is just really the STL and the, the surface geometry. And for this, using this, in using SEPIHEX mesh, we can define the, the volumetric mesh, which is used for computation. So if you don't have external mesh, you can use it directly this approach. Or if you have the external mesh, you can use it. And simply in the settings, you just loaded the external mesh and directly here appear the, the, the patches or the boundaries from the external mesh and you, you assign the type in the same way, but you skip the step of of creating the mesh. So the snappy is automatically skipped and the external mesh is automatically used. Yeah. Yeah, okay, so it's another one. Then, yeah, how can we optimize the designs with the help of steady state uh, analysis report? Uh, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, the, the op if, if, this, if this question is, is meant uh, on the optimization tools, those are on the way, those are under the development and we, we, we collaborate extensively with other uh, partners uh, at CFD support. So that's, that's the future and it's gonna be soon introduced. So that's about this. Yeah, another question. Yeah, let's go one by one. So there's another one for Radek, is there already a way to get a good mesh, including boundary layers with snappy hex mesh from Marcus Coman. Hello, Marcus. Yeah. Uh, so, well, well, Radek, would you answer this? Yes. Yes and no. Not, 
it, it depends on your geometry. Yeah. If you, for example, for this axial type of 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 geometries, there is uh, uh, there is a good good results for the to get the boundary layers with the Stampex mesh. Problem is for the really comp complex geometries with high curvature. So for this type of geometries, basically it needs really more time to find the proper proper parameters to really get get the nice nice boundary layer. Yeah, so for let's say for flat and not so curved surface, uh, we we can get really nice boundary layers. So for this Excel fan, uh, we are able we are able or using this software you are able to create nice boundary layers with uh, let's say with the uh, 95 more than 90 percent of uh, of how to say uh, of success edit uh, success successively edit uh, boundary layer so yes but it needs maybe more more user interaction to to, to achieve it yeah so okay uh, then um, yeah, let's answer by, by the answer, right? So, so I, now I see at least three uh, questions uh, where uh, Oliver is going to mm -hmm. answer. So, will you answer them? Uh, the CF Turbo in on Linux and also the, the the next two ones. Oh yes, I can. Um, uh, the, the, there's one question: Is CF Turbo and TCFD available on Linux? Um, for TCFD, I can say yes. For CF Turbo, I have to say it's only available under Windows. So that's uh, that's okay. probably a limitation. Uh, then uh, there is a question: Will it be applicable for the designing of turbochargers in automotive engines? Of course. Uh, uh, Turbocharger components can be designed in CF Turbo and have been designed successfully in CF Turbo and have also been uh, analyzed successfully in TCFD. So, um, and they are used by by a, a couple of customers to this okay. end. Uh, what else uh, do we have here? Yeah, yeah. There's also a question. Uh, I can answer it. Uh, is it possible to introduce additional geometry upstream and downstream of the impeller, for example, porous media or or something? Uh, the answer is yes. It can. Yeah, it it, it can be. The, any number of components can be added, so it the, it can be really complex. I mean, the 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 model to be simulated. Um, uh, can we optimize? Yeah, yeah. Another question: Can we optimize the design of of Kaplan and Francis turbine uh, designs? So, in in terms of, can we simulate uh, these? Uh, absolutely, yes. You can simulate them in turbine CFD. Uh, yeah, optimization. It was already answered. It it's on the way. It's a big topic of across the turbo machinery field, and we follow all these trends. And uh, we've already done uh, quite uh, some. Uh, work has been done, so it will be introduced uh, soon. Uh, on Radek, is it possible to to model a periodic section and introducing mixing planes uh, of the for the stator components? Uh, yes, it is possible, and actually I prepared a case because from CF Turbo you can also export just a periodic segment. So if you s yeah, you still see my screen? Yeah, no, okay. Yes, we can. Yeah, yeah, go ahead. So this is the input geometry. So this is really only one section. As you can see from the settings, there is just a change that uh, blah, 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 where is the components. So basically here, you define the number of periodic segments, and the mixing planes are defined here in the mixing here in this column. So here for the for the communication between stator and rotor part, the ten radial mixing plane is used for communication and yeah for in this case there is no no way how to create the AMI interface so yes it uses the segment periodic segment uses mixing plane approach and the number of mixing planes are defined here yeah so it is available and and we are also about to uh, to introduce the 
the uh, the unsta for let's say the communication for for unsteady state for transient cases, the special boundary condition which can handle also the transient cases for the segment parts. So I believe we will it, it will be av available in the next release. So also this this will come in few months. Uh, okay, okay. Thank you, Eric, for this. So, and another question on you. Uh, my question is about uh, processor and simulation. What is the physical meaning of the processor numbers, and uh, what happened uh, if I set uh, the very high number or very low number, for example? Yeah. Okay. Well, it depends on a lot of parameters. So, in general, you can set any number. <laughs> so, but it. It is, I would say it is, it, uh, oh, where it is, uh, simulation? Yeah, it depends on your hardware. So if you have just 100 cores, so there is no way why you should set 200 cores. You can, but it slows the, slows the computation. So there is no, <laughs> there's no reason to, to, to do that. Then it depends on the cell numbers, on the, on the, uh, uh, on the uh, yeah on, on on your mesh if you have just a f just a coarse mesh so there is no need to compute it on 100 co processors yeah so because the scalability increases but if you have let's say to 20 million uh, cells in your mesh then there is a good reason to use 60 cores 100 cores yeah, so it depends on the on the mesh and on your hardware. So restriction for the hardware use just just the number of processors you have, and there is no reason to use 100 processors uh, to simulate to simulate the mesh which has just hundreds of thousands of cells. Okay, uh, the next question: uh, What? or if any optimization tools are compatible with TCFD uh, and EG OptiSlang, uh, question from, from Alistair. Um, yeah, 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 the, the, the same answer as, as before. We, we, we are now in the, in the early phase of, of our research on, uh, let's say, uh, optimization tools partners and uh, OptiSlang is one of them. So we are currently in the in the in the let's say merging process. So let's let's see. We, we are going to to we are working on it. Let's say. Um, okay. Uh, yeah yeah yeah. I noticed that in the simulation looks like velocity pressure limiter. So Radek, would you answer the the, the top top question? Oh, yeah, yeah. I am. Yeah yeah yeah. We can see it right here. So yeah, it is included. There are pre uh, limiters for for the pressure and velocities, and it is included directly into the solver, which helps helps to converge the the, the solver. So basically, it helps at the beginning of the iteration when your initial conditions are rough or not so not so or are far from the from the from the results. So yeah, it is directly directly implemented in the solver and it helps to, to the solver. It is just a converg convergence. Uh, yeah. Uh, okay. We have the convergence, yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, uh, yeah, yeah. How can we measure the quality of mesh? Uh, again, on our deck. Okay, so basically we can see, you can see it here in this report. Uh, uh, and the, the measurement, the mesh size and details are here. So it follows the, the common common parameters which which must be satisfied with every commercial solver used so used finite volume methods. So that it's cell volume. I, uh, sorry, sorry. For example, skewness, non-orthogonality, which needs to be less than 70 or at least at 80. And if it's more than 80, it is not so. Uh, not so good to use it because you can you can see the divergence and so on. Well, the skewness, the open foam, or our, our solvers are quite quite robust with respect to the skewness. So to skewness is not a big deal for the solvers, and other parameters are the same for 
for for yeah these common common parameters which should satisfy some some values. There is no I think here is no time to <laughs> to to discuss all of them. So if you have questions, so write to our email addresses and we will we will discuss it with you directly. Uh, okay, uh, so the quality of the mesh, yeah, yeah. Uh, the next question, an example of engine combustion, uh, yeah, th there is not uh, yet a combustion module uh, in, C uh, in Turbo Machine CFD, so uh, no combustion yet. Uh, and also uh, another question, can we use uh, it for fuel optimization of engines? Oh, yes, you can, it's, it's general CFD. Uh, uh, can we measure level of the noise? Uh, yeah, uh, uh, aeroacoustics is an, uh, another big topic uh, across the CFD of turbo machinery. Uh, we are developing a new module which which is going to be introduced uh, quite soon. I believe it will be still this year. That's that's my expectation. Uh, yeah, and then we have a couple of questions regarding uh, CF turbo or or design. So Oliver, are you still? You know, yes, uh, I'm a, okay. I'm, yeah. Uh, <laughs> what uh, what is <laughs> the next yeah, yeah. turbo yeah, question? Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, yeah I, can, I, I will read you the, the question. So uh, the first one is: uh, Will it be applicable for designing low blade number uh, ducted fans and counter rotating ducted fans? All right. Okay. Um, uh, counter rotating uh, fans. The design of them will be available with the next major release in uh, coming this year. And uh, low pressure as well as low uh, number bladed um, fans can be designed with CFT Turbo even today. So the answer is is yes. Okay. Uh, the next one again on Oliver. Can we solve fun without direction blades? Um, I'm not sure whether I understand it correctly, but uh, I can tell that I almost any kind of geometry, uh, what you have in mind for this design of blades, can be considered within CF Turbo. Yeah, yeah. It's like without stator, for example, meant. Or, oh, oh or, yes, of or, course. Or, yeah, 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 yeah. Of, of course, yes, yes. Okay, uh, yes, of course. Uh, can we predict combustion parameters uh, through CFD two? <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, combustion parameters can't be. Uh, yeah, 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 predicted yeah. or calculated with CF Turbo because it's a design software. Of course, it does. Uh, perform a couple of calculations and so on, but it's not meant to to design, for instance, combustion chambers and so on, where combust combustion plays an a decisive role. Yeah, yeah. So it was this. Uh, the next one is: Can we use CF Turbo for the energy audit uh, analyzed analyze in the turbo machinery? Yeah, the answer is similar. As we do a lot of calculations about averaged values, there is of course uh, some sort of an answer of CF Turbo towards the, the, the uh, performance behavior of the machine that has been designed or the turbo machinery that has been designed, but this is only true within the accuracy of that kind of calculations and those kinds of calculations are, of course have not the accuracy accuracy as TCFD or CFD in general would have. Okay, okay, so it was this question. Yeah, the next one is, uh, can we use the CF Turbo for the analyze of the cavitation problems in the pump? Um, it's similar. If you, if you want to analyze the problems, then, then you should use a CFD package like TCFD. But of course, if you want to to design something what is not crucial to cavitation, then there are some uh, guidance given or uh, yeah, guidance in choosing the right parameters towards to have a, a well a design which is not um, prone to to cavitation or where the 
cavitation is uh, a lesser problem than than with an um, general design. So yeah, yeah. You, you will be helped through the design process, but it's it's not an analyzing to analysis tool. Yeah, yeah, of course. Uh, so it's this and. Uh, the second last question is on Radek, uh, can we vary the temperature of the flow as it passes through a multi-stage sim simulation? So I, I don't know if I understand it well, but basically if we compute it in the compressible mode, so yes you can with compressible simulation, we can we have the temperature field so we can see the temperature drop through through the passes through the multi-stage simulation. So multi-stage is can be also also simulated here. So and for high high velocity or or high pressure fans, compressors, so it, there there is there is compressible solver even tran uh, transient but also transient but also transonic solver. So I believe yes it is possible if I understand the que question correctly. Okay, okay. So and there's a. This will be last. Okay, we have few more, but I think we are we 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 should finish. So the the, the last the last question and answer is, uh, how can we get this uh, recorded video? Yeah, there there will be an email sent to all of you uh, where we, where where the video will be uploaded. So don't worry, we will send you the email on this. Yeah, and I think it's. I think it, this is it. Let's 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 finish. So uh, I will get the information, yeah, back uh, the the presentation back to me. Okay. So yeah. So it, I think it's time to conclude. So thank you for coming to the webinar. Feel free to contact us in the future. I'm sure you know very well how to do that. The questions on CF Turbo are to be sent to CF Turbo company. Uh, the questions about Turbo Machine CFD are about to be sent to CFD support. We will gladly answer all your questions and and comments. Uh, we will gladly support you in your Turbo Machinery projects. It's our job and also a pleasure for us. Yeah, so. Uh, anything more to say, uh, Oliver? Would you conclude? Um, no, I just want to thank to the audience for their time, and I, I hope I can uh, answer a couple of questions more, or can get into discussion with uh, with you. Thank you. Uh, and Radek, uh, and uh, also I'd like to thank you, the audience, and. Yeah, I really believe that that the software and the synergy of CF Turbo and our TCFD is really the future of turbo machinery virtual prototyping and can save a lot of time in this process of of the of the virtual prototyping. Okay, thank you. Um, all right, so we would like to thank you all for the attention. We are looking forward to collaborating with you. So stay tuned and bye bye for now. Bye bye. Okay, bye bye. Hi. <laughs> yeah, bye-bye. Yeah. Okay, so this is it. <laughs>